Rocks of the Southern Alps of New Zealand How the Southern Alps of New Zealand are built? Let's an example of this mountain range see how the mountains are building on our planet. In this video we'll talk about a region of the rocks, where they come from, and how they build the backbone mountain of the Southern Island of New Zealand. Southern Alps stretching for more than 500 kilometers, from Mount Asprey National Park in the south to the Nelson Lakes National Park in the north. Everybody who ever seen the New Zealand on the map or visited it knows that the whole Southern Island is consist of the backbone of Southern Alps, one of the most biggest and beautiful mountains in Southern Hemisphere. The Southern Alps are characterized by different landscapes throughout, they're changing very fast. They say if you come to New Zealand, it takes you just hours or minutes to move from one type of landscape and geography to other. Icy peaks, forested flanks, deep beautiful gorges, amazing rainforest, tussock land and alpine environment, you can find it all just driving in one day throughout the Southern Alps. The main story behind it lies in the geology of that area, how it's been built, its composition, topography, and as a result, effect of the ocean and the climate on formation of beautiful landscape in Southern Alps of New Zealand. And that small role they play the earthquakes activity, volcanoes, and of course, the glaciations. Maori was the first who found the passages throughout the Southern Alps from east to west, the main barrier on the Southern Island. Later, the Europeans arriving there, following the footsteps, put the main highway crossing those passes. Today, if you follow the main pass, Arthur's Pass, you will travel in through the history of geology, formation of the mountains, and also the change of the landscape. Let's have a look at that closer. If we start from the east, and the gentle Canterbury Plains, what are the Canterbury Plains? Canterbury Plains are the material that have been brought by the glaciers and rivers from the mountains and nicely leveled was deposited towards the east. When you pass uh, a lot of farms driving through the Canterbury Plains, you see the gradually ascending gentle slopes and then highways that climb steeply into the Tassa grassland. You will see the skyline of the mountain ranges at the background and if you travel in the uh, winter seasons, they will be snow capped. Much of the peaks of the Southern Alps are grey in color and they composed of predominant graviaki, the main stone, the backbone of the Southern Alps. The formation of the Southern Alps started about 300 million years ago and traveling westward you will see the gradual change of geology and as a result we will travel through the history. The majority of the Southern Alps are made of sedimentary rocks. In my previous video we talk about Castle Hill and the basic geology of New Zealand. We are already touched about that. The sedimentary rock composed of layers of mudstone alternated with layers of sandstone. In some places they have more creamier, brownish color, most of the time gray. The sediment was laid down on the ancient seafloor in horizontal layers. But the beds are now are all deformed and nearly always inclined, folded and often overturned and they composed a little bit confusing masses, which is represent the history of this mountain's building. The name of this rock, Graviaki, comes from the German word. It's meant due to green sandstone that originally was found in the Hartz Mountain of Germany. Mostly it's uh, sand grains in the silt matrix, and they're all cemented into hard gray mass. All this group of the rocks we call the Turles supergroup, and it's named after the area of Turles Range in the inland Canterbury. That's where the name comes from. However, it's not just uh, sandstone mudstones, but it's also uh, some mixture of black mudstone, reddish volcanic mudstones, and in places limestone formations. Please see my Castle Hill Basin video about the limestone history. All these rocks were lying on the bottom of the ocean for over 200 million years. These tallest rocks was scraped and lifted over the big distance around New Zealand region and we can find them from Otago to East Cape. 
and as far as beneath the sea in Katman Islands and Auckland Islands. However, not throughout this travel from Canterbury to the west coast, you can see the same type of rocks. If you start looking closer, the more you move towards the Alpine Fold, which is located towards the west part of the Southern Alps, the highest peak in the Southern Alps, you notice a slight change in the rocks and they become more modified the closer you move towards the west. The sedimentary original rocks being changed or metamorphosed. Thus, when two edges of the plate start meeting each other and sliding against each other, the rocks that be lying underneath start experience high temperature and heat. As anything, if you think, if you wrap your palms together, there's some heat created. If you wrap it very fast, or even burn your palms. Similar happening with the rocks. The intensive movements, including very high pressure, which arising from not just the pressure of the two rocks crashing toward each other, two plates, you would think they large, but also the hardness and the mass length of these rocks, they create enormous temperature and pressure. And the four, the original rocks, sedimentary rocks, will reach some particular temperatures when they start a little bit melting, warming up, and they start modified and changing. For example, original sandy and silty material become a new type of rock, we call it schists. If you look on the schist, it have a very platy orientation and it shows you the direction perpendicular to this orientation where the pressure was applied and sandy silty matrix start squashing, kind of stretching and forming that type of rock. In New Zealand Southern Alps, we call it Haast schist, after the geologist Haast. And you can find them across Otago, towards north, between Alpenfold and the main divide. To continue driving through the Artus Pass, you can actually observe the change when the rocks start changing from the normal greyish graviaki to the schist. We call it schistosity, when you have slightly modified and new minerals appearing in the rock and you see this layering, metamorphic layering. For example, in the beginning you see just a slight layering and just some pale green minerals, chloride, they are present. And the more west you're traveling, the more noticeably and pronounced schistosity become. You have formation already of shiny biotite, which you can observe through the rocks and give this nice shine on a sunny day. And towards the Alpen fold, we start finding a red garnet within the rocks. The minerals within the rocks under the temperature and heat, as I said, they are not just getting moved toward each other and squashed and stretched, but they also change the mineral composition. As any school's chemistry experiment will show you. Grains of sand and mud recrystallize, and new minerals grow perpendicular to the direction of pressure. Thus, we form the slate and schist. And temperatures we're talking about maybe 300 degrees in the depths over 10 kilometers down from the surface. And the more you move deeper and the more you change the temperature and pressure, the different type of minerals will form, forming different type of metamorphic rock. Therefore, the deeper you are in towards the ground and the higher temperatures you see on this picture very nicely represented that that the more modified rocks come out towards the surface. However, the moment you cross the Alpine Fault on the west, the rock changed dramatically. Why? Because you're moving from Pacific to Australian plate. There's a very, very abrupt change. And the moment you cross the Alpine Fault, you're on the land of ancient Gondwana geology rocks. And they'll be different. There won't be those squashed and metamorphosized Torlos group, they've been uplifted because two plates collide and start bringing material up, up, up. It will be the remnants of the Gondwana original bedrock, which been as well modified because of the collision and regional geology. This is the remnants of ancient Gondwana. Gondwana, the continent had been there more than 250 million years ago. Vast continent which occupied the southern hemisphere. The fragments of this ancient landmass are scattered around the globe right now. It's Australia, of course, Antarctica, India, Africa, and South America. 
In New Zealand, therefore, we can find only on this little west bit this remnants of this Gondwana land. And you can find it mostly in Fjordland, west coast, and around the Nelson. These basement rocks are very ancient, they are Precambrian time, and they are over 600 million years old. Therefore, in New Zealand, this is the oldest rock you can find. And in Georgia, we call it Western Province. To the east, all the Southern Alp composed of newish turtles group, which been modified, metamorphosized and uplifted, and this old province to the west. Therefore, in the blink of the eyes, you can cross the border of the Alpine Fold from 200 million years old rocks to the east, to the ancient rocks on which dinosaurs were walking on, which are about 600 million years old. In the next video, we'll talk in detail how those rocks originally formed in the bottom of the ocean, Torlus group, and Gondwana rocks. Therefore, I'll see you in the next videos about New Zealand geology. Stay with me and subscribe.